Hello, and welcome to another episode of Movies, colon, they're pretty good. I'm your host, Travis Dudding, and welcome to the new year, 2023, you know, new year, new me, same okay podcast. Uh, this Today, we're covering something very topical, and by topical, I mean the original of something that a sequel is coming out right now or is out already i'm sure a lot of you have seen it already but we are talking about avatar from 2009 directed by james cameron this is like his first movie since his first feature film since titanic which was at the time the highest grossing movie of all time and then This would go on to be the highest grossing movie of all time. And I think it did win its spot back uh, from Avengers Endgame. That did surpass it for a while, but then they're like, oh, like, let's do a re-release because the new one's coming out. Or I think they also just did a re-release just to get their number one spot back from Endgame, like, a few years ago. But anyways, that's what we're talking about. Avatar. All right, let's get into it. All right, so we got a Marine Corps veteran. He's narrating. He's talking about being in a cryostasis for six years, and he's traveling to a new planet. This is in the future. I forget what year it's supposed to be, but it's like well into the future. Um, he's disabled, uh, paraplegic. Uh, his legs don't work. He's got his like little skinny legs every time he, he's getting in the wheelchair, and uh, you're finding out that his twin brother Tommy was a scientist, and he was on this uh, uh, signed up for this mission to go to this planet and everything, um, and he's taking his place because he's his twin. And a little more on that in a little bit, um, but he. Uh, the brother was mugged and murdered uh, just for his money and everything. Um, and so now Jake, the main, our main character, Jake Sully, is going to this planet, Pandora, in his place. And you find out that basically they need... Um, they need, uh, needed... Uh, in order to replace the brother, they needed someone with an identical genome. And they have one because they're twins. Uh, he was a Marine. I already said that. Um, he's like talking a lot about like, oh, once a Marine, always a Marine. And anyone that knows a Marine knows that's true. You know. Um, and the other clue uh, that if you didn't pick up, like say you missed that part, the other way you could tell that they're Marines is like when you see them eating their meals it's just like a plate full of crayons that's how you could tell they're marines um so the uh reason that they're uh okay so the economy on earth is terrible and uh no uh like a veteran can't get a a spinal surgery to walk again like you, you can't afford it there's no like va the va benefits are even worse in the future than they are now so that's good to know um and then you see a lot of the other uh marines and people there like bullying him so like they you know you're still allowed to bully disabled people in the future so that's comforting for all you bullies out there just just know like you you still get your uh, jollies in in the future you're allowed to bully still uh um, we see a this giant uh tractor thing bulldozer driving by and it's like I don't know, like 50 feet tall or something. These huge tires, but you see these uh, arrows sticking out of the tires. Um, so that's kind of just like a foreshadowing of what's to come. Uh, he's talking a little bit about the... Um, in the narration, he's talking about the... Oh, wait. The, no, this isn't in the narration. This is... Uh, he's getting a, a briefing on everything and the planet. And uh, uh, so are all the new other new recruits coming in. And you find out that the... Uh, there's poison in the arrows that'll just kill you immediately and also the arrows are huge because the indigenous people or indigenous beings the navi uh are about 10 feet tall so a lot bigger than humans and so their arrows are quite big as well um 
And you see the the leader uh, of the military forces there. It's the uh, Colonel Korch, and uh, played by Stephen Lang. He's uh, you know the typical meathead military leader that you see in a lot of movies. Very on the nose. Very uh, typical, but also as someone who was in the military very accurate they are like that so it's not that far off like that hollywood gets a lot of things wrong about the military don't get me wrong but this is like this stereotype is pretty accurate to be honest um so you're going to find out that they while they're on this planet they have the technology to um create these remote control bodies that look like the indigenous population and so and they're called avatars just like in you know you have your twitter avatar you, you know your bitmoji and stuff like that you know it's just a simple term there you go that's the titular that's what it's why it's called that because you are a human being put into another body and you control it and that is your avatar and obviously if that body dies that's fine because it's just another body you know you're fine and they're very expensive uh they're grown from uh your own human dna so they do look like you and everything uh to an extent and uh because they're so expensive that's why they're they even needed a replacement for the scientist brother tommy so it's like, well, we can't waste this money, so let's replace the scientist with this soldier, and then we can use him in a different way. Uh, so the, every um, tour that, like, I guess it's like a six-year tour there, um, uh, we meet uh, his scientist boss, which is Sigourney Weaver playing uh, Dr. Grace Augustine. Um and she's all complaining about like that oh why did they send me this marine and so jake's obviously like well so, you know sorry my brother being murdered was a big inconvenience for you and she just like i was like okay like doesn't care um and we also see uh giovanni rabisi uh is his character's name is parker i forget the first name uh he's just like in his office uh you know using those little like putter things uh and uh he's like the corporate guy for this whole thing like probably works for the government but also just like he's just like a business guy like not like uh, he's not a soldier he's not a scientist he's just there for the money basically and that's and that that's when we come to the main reason that they're there is to find unobtainium which is the most creative name for any substance ever. I guess it is like a real like term within science, but it is like a vague term saying it's like, oh, this material, it's like, it's, it's used to describe like a theoretical material, unobtainium, like you can't obtain it. But here it's a real thing in the movie. So it's, just, it's funny and it's laughable, but it does come from something real so kudos to james cameron for that um so uh now we get to the whole process he's getting put in this like tanning bed looking thing and uh that's how he he gets hooked up to all these wires and that's where he can control his avatar so he wakes up in the avatar body and and as a paraplegic he's like well shit like i gotta try out these legs and so first thing he does is get up and walk around and they're all telling him like no like you gotta like take it easy like that's too fast and everything and he's like no like forget that like i haven't been able to walk for years like don't tell me like not to walk now so he escapes from the room pulls out his like iv and everything and just like starts running around and using his legs as much as he can because why wouldn't you like of course he would mm -hmm. um he sees uh the avatar version of uh dr augustine she's walking around um and like uh they're like playing basketball as the avatars because like this is the only time that uh like they're tall enough to dunk i guess you know and get like a short like little montage you see uh jake's like playing with the some little like plant thing that's uh 
like kind of like i don't know like almost like a sea anemone but it's like kind of they kind of like float around and uh dr augustine walks by tells him he's gonna go blind so you know the the old classic masturbation joke and so then uh cut a little bit ahead they're going on a mission you got uh michelle rodriguez uh as uh trudy chacon i think that i i i don't i i haven't heard the pronunciation on her name so i'm just going off of what imdb said i i mi- i totally missed like what her name was because i think they only call her trudy the whole time but uh you may know her uh, uh most people know her from fast and furious in that franchise i know her as Ana lucia from lost and so she's going to be flying this mission. She's taking the she's the pilot basically because they got to go to a different area of the planet and everything, kind of like a forward operating operating base. And uh, Jake's wheeling around because he's in his human body again, and he goes and talks to the colonel. And the colonel's like getting his reps in. He's pumping iron. You know, he's got to be like the strong sixty year old man that he is and and he wants jake to work for him see he has his own like well not him personally but the government has their own ulterior motives for this whole project and so basically it's like all right like you're you're with the science team so you're you know you're working for them but you're also doing some side stuff for us like we need this inside information and that the science people are our way in so like get this info that i need and i'll make sure you can walk again once you go back home and so basically like the u.s government is like hey if you do our dirty work then we'll like give you medical care but only if you do that so <laughs> I mean, it's not too far off from the current state and the little ahead of its time for 2009 i'd say and so they get in their futuristic helicopter and take off uh into the jungle they're flying around uh and you get to see like all like the landscape of the planet it looks beautiful it looks amazing like for being like all cgi in 2009 like that's one of the things it's like this was a very expensive movie and it shows like it it i'd say from being from 2009 it's aged better than a lot of marvel movies that came like mcu movies that came out in the last two years like it looks better than wonder woman it looks better than like some of the stuff in um i know wonder woman's dc but i'm just i'm trying to think of like current stuff and I'm trying to think. I'm trying to think of an MCU movie that like really stuck out as like, oh, that effect didn't look good. But like when they're uh, like how they have the like when they're all of when all the Avengers are standing there and they have their masks off, but their bodies are CG. It looks weird. It really does. And I think Avatar, like almost twenty years earlier, has aged better than those movies and that's that's saying something like there's still some you you see some of the the wearing on it you know some of it looks a little dated especially when we get to the the creatures but i gotta say like they he did a good job like or the special effects team did did a good job so they they get to their spot they're they've landed they're walking around in the woods uh jake's playing with the shrooms that are on the ground uh and like you touch them and they like close up and stuff like that so and it makes like a fun like musical noise and everything so he's like oh this is fun you know like a little kid and he touches these mushrooms that like close up and then it reveals this giant like hammerhead rhinoceros dinosaur and starts charging them so he's running from that um this causes a bunch of chaos then 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 the team's running away too and then this is what gets him separated from his science team and so he's running for his life and everything um 
finally gets away from it because he's uh, then the rhino thing is attacked by these uh, like glossy hyenas and they look like th- th- this is the specific creature i was saying that did not age well because i don't know because it's so glossy it looks like a like an unfinished special effect like you know if you're watching the dvd special features and it's a deleted scene and they're like oh we were gonna put this special effect in so you see like the the very unfinished version where it's like very low poly and like no uh like cell shading on it or like i don't i forget what the term is but it it just looks very bad and this is what these like hyena things look like um probably i I don't remember noticing that in 2009 but (laughs) i was noticing it the other day um so then uh zoe saldana shows up to save the day uh her character is natiri and so she shows up she's got her bow and arrow she's uh slaying these hyenas um or get or not like slaying them because she does end up killing one and then uh she says a prayer over the body um so then this is where we find out that they uh that the navi have this like one with nature mentality and no killing is okay type of thing so like eat they so they basically say a prayer saying like oh thank you to their deity for providing this food and i'm sorry that you had to go but you're gonna go back like you are you're part of the bigger picture so you're going into this circle of life type thing um i forget the exact words it's way more beautiful than how i just said it but uh so then uh you find out that she can speak english um and they they did have like a throwaway line earlier saying that that's what doc, dr augustine was doing there like they were have like a school set up and everything for these uh for the navi to learn english from the sky people is what they call them and but she like doesn't really want to talk to him but then she's like saying like no it's bad that this like thing died because he says like oh thank you for saving me and she's like no like it was wrong for him to for this creature to die and he's like well why did you save me and she doesn't really have an answer for that but she does like uh but she keeps talking to him and then these like floaty things uh are floating around him like the like dandelion sea and enemy things and they're like gathering around him and uh she's like oh these are the seeds of the sacred tree and because they're like migrating to him she's like okay that's a sign like they wouldn't just like go to you if like you weren't important so she uh takes him back to her tribe um find out that she's the daughter of the chief he wants to kill him uh kill jake obviously he's like nope he's a sky person get him out of here and she's like well awa who is their deity um gave me a sign that he's uh like that he's okay like she was like all the seeds were going around him that's a sign like he's a sign from awa and they're like oh okay all right well who are you like what like what kind of person are you and he's like um are you like one of the teachers or whoever i forget i I forget who he thinks um he is and um then jake's like no i'm a warrior uh of the jarhead clan so that was that's a funny joke um and so basically like after talking to him for a bit it's like okay like fine like uh my daughter will teach you our ways and like she's and you're her responsibility now so she takes him to where they sleep which are in these like big like tree hammocks which are, look really cool uh kind of reminds me like of a like a heightened version of the where they sleep in hook like the lost boys and everything and so then he wakes up back in his real body like in the 
tanning bed thing. And so he's like giving him the um, the rundown of everything that he learned. The colonel's laughing about the warrior with the Jarhead clan line. And then they're giving him some more information like, hey, like this big tree that they took you to. Um, this it's the they're the village like with the big tree that's like on the largest deposit of unobtainium in the whole planet so like that's an important spot like i need that we need you to tell us everything you know about it basically so natiri's like showing them around showing them these different creatures and stuff like the ones that they can like ride on and everything and you find out that they um they connect their ponytails because they all have like these long ponytails and if you connect it to an animal and they have like their own like little ponytail or their tail or something and they can um like the little these little fibers uh unveil at the tips and they like intertwine with each other and that's how they like form a bond with the with the creatures and they can do that with the tree you'll find that out later um just anything like the whole planet is this like interconnected system and that's how they like bond with the creatures that's how they are like one with each other too and jake uh so it's, it's just cutting like back and forth like he's with the navi he's with the military people he's giving them inf the info that he's finding out and then so now they're going to go on another mission and this time they're going to go to the hallelujah mountains which are these big like floating mountains And but th this is like this is a mission with Natiri, like not like a military mission. Um, so he's uh, he's on this trip. Like this is just part of his like learning, like what to do. And they uh, so they got to climb these mountains. Uh, no like no like help or anything. But it's like they're like connected by like vines and stuff. You can get up there that way. But they are like floating. It's like one of the like really cool effects from the movie. And. So then we uh, see these uh, like winged creatures, kind of look like pterodactyl type things, and these are the Ikron, and um, they uh, the bond with them is they will bond with only one hunter for their entire life, and so it's like one of the more special bonds you can get with a creature, and the way to. Okay, I'm getting ahead of myself, but that is, uh, but that that part is true. He's not, he's not going to uh, this part yet, but um, uh, he, he's like he's not gonna get on one of these yet. Like he's not doing that part, but he is learning about them. And so, but we do see this montage of him. Uh, learning their ways and he's like earning their trust and everything um he's able to get um grace back in there uh dr augustine and so she's back there teaching the kids and everything and being a part of the village and things like that um and then this is where she talks about the network of energy that they have with the the whole planet and it's all like all interconnected it's like all these synapses and stuff and it is like a brain almost and now he's ready to like go and try to be try to ride the mighty akron and they're climbing the climbing the floating mountains to get up to like the big nest of them uh he he also says that the um Americans or the humans call them banshees. I don't know why I don't just call it like what it is, but you know, that's a very American thing to <laughs> be like, oh, that's what you call it. That's the real name for it. Well, I'm going to call it this. And so they climb up there and she tells them, like, if, uh, like, like you choose your Ikran and it must choose you too. And he asks, well, how will I know if it chooses me? And she says, it'll try to kill you. So, like, that's comforting. And so he goes, um, he goes in there and he, like, finds the one that he's going to try to, um, try to bond with. And, of course, it attacks him. He's got to get the, uh, 
Um, he's got to get the mouth closed so it doesn't like chop him in half basically and um gets on the back he's like wrestling with it to try to get the um their ponytails connected and he finally does it and she's yelling at him like you the you got to do like your first flight is what seals the bond you have to fly now and basically pushes them off a cliff and so now he's got to like fly and he's basically like whatever he thinks he's got to like think like oh fly straight and like talk to it and communicate it but also with it within his head as well so it's almost like a telepathy thing but they are like actually physically connected so um so he's flying around and everything and it's working and he's a natural with it he's talking about like i was never much of a horse guy but i but i love this and so they uh they're flying around and Nateri's flying next to him and she's pointing out the 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 tree of souls this big like bright tree it's like all glowing and everything and then she's like that's where um like no outsiders are allowed there and that's like presumably where like um it's probably like the like nucleus of this whole brain network basically and um so but then as she's like talking about that and as they're flying then this big shadow comes over them and you find out that there's this big giant flying thing called a taruk and that is like the like the apex predator top of the food chain basically and it's like it goes after them they get away from it and everything like that um it's also known as the last shadow because it's the last shadow that you'll see right before you die basically and um so she's t telling him about the taruk saying that there uh, have only ever been five navi to be uh riders of a taruk and including her grandfather um and then, so we get that a little bit of information. Uh, we get another montage of, like, back and forth between Human Jake and Navi Jake. And he's, talk, he's like, doing these, like, little video diaries um, as, as part of the experiment and the mission and everything. Um, he's talking about how he's, like, forgetting his old life and that, like, the human body doesn't feel like the real him anymore that the navi jake feels like the real jake um he's talking to the colonel the colonel says like hey we have everything we need like you can wrap this up and it, but he's also like saying like he's a little worried about uh him like getting too close with the natives and everything and saying like you're starting to be like more one of them don't get sucked in but he tells the colonel it's like hey like i just have this one more ceremony and once i do this like they'll like fully trust me because i'll be like a real it's like the becoming a man type ceremony for them but obviously you're not a man you're an avi and so he has to do this last ceremony um and then he does it and everything it goes well uh Neytiri takes them to the Tree of Voices. Uh, it's where they can hear the voices of their ancestors and become connected to them. Um, but then they like, uh, she's like, oh, like you can, like, you could choose a wife now within the tribe, and and she's like giving them a few options, and he's like, well, what if I've already chosen someone? And then she's like, oh, like she chooses you too, like so. He wants to be with her because he's fallen in love with her but she's already been like betrothed to somebody else so this other guy this other warrior guy uh sute uh but that doesn't matter because she's like she's fallen in love with jake as well so they connect their ponytails that's like the way that they have sex is they like do their ponytail sex they connect and then they're mated for life and then like human jake's like ah oh, like what are you doing man like are you, like are you sure about this like you're going like all in and so then but they then they fall asleep together and we start to see it's the next morning and the bulldozers have showed up 
like he's out of time and they're like ready to go in there and bulldoze the village and take uh take all the unobtainium uh but the problem is he's not waking up because he's not in like the human jake is like just eating breakfast and stuff and getting ready for the day because he doesn't think this is happening right now he has no idea so he's just like oh going about this day and everything and natiri's like frantically trying to wake him up and but he's just this like limp lifeless body because he's not in his avatar um but fi so finally gets in wakes up and everything and it's like oh like see finally sees what's going on um and he's like trying to stop the bulldozers he like gets up on top because there's like a little camera and he's like trying to get him to stop and they're not stopping so he just starts smashing the camera but then like the people on the other side see like oh yep that's that's jake that's jake sully like uh, now they realize that he's a problem now and he's getting in the way so they uh but they get back to the tribe to like warn them like hey like the sky people are coming they're gonna try to destroy us like you gotta leave that way you could save save your people and but then they also find out that uh jake and natiri have made it for life and that pisses some people off like because he's an outsider even though he's even though he's done all the things he's still technically an outsider and so they're mad uh but then like as he's trying to explain like what's going to happen here comes the colonel he shows up at the base where uh the where they've been like where their uh human bodies are and takes him out of the avatar tanning bed and like wakes him up so like as jake is like trying to explain what's going on he just like passes out basically because he's taken out of his avatar and um dr augustine is trying to explain to the colonel like no like this you can't destroy this like it's their brain it's like more complex than like anything on earth like it's more complex than a human brain and it's like connecting everything like hundreds of times more complex and and he's like nope don't care uh i'm strong military man uh i like money and violence so he's like saying like all right it's like we're just gonna go blow up the home tree and nothing you can do about it um but then he's uh so but jake's trying to just uh talk to parker giovanni rubisi the corporate guy and he's like hey like i can get them to move and this like well like then it'll make you look better if you don't have to kill people and he's like fine like you have one hour um so he gets back in the body um he's trying to get them to evacuate um but then Natiri finds out the truth of everything, like that the reason he was sent there was to like find out this information and everything. And he's like trying to explain, like, no, like, yeah, like I started out like lying to you, but like all everything was true, like after that. Like I really did fall in love with you. I fell in love with the people and you. But obviously she feels very betrayed and everything. Like, why wouldn't you? Um And then the uh the Navi or hearing this and they're like no like we want to fight like we this is our home like we can't just like let this happen um but then as they're like rallying then uh the colonel's there with his like big big airplane and he's uh gassing them like he starts like putting all this like i don't know if it's poisonous gas or just like a tear gas type thing but they're all coughing and everything and got to get out of there and then he starts bombing the trees like shooting missiles at it and everything um uh jake's been like handcuffed at this point by the navi uh not handcuffed but like tied up and everything but um then natiri's mom sets him free like if you really are one of us then help us so he's trying and uh trudy's there like she's in one of the planes and she's like no like forget this like screw this like i don't want to be a part of this and decides to sabotage the mission and help the navi instead um uh but it's it's a little too late because the home tree is toppled over it's destroyed the navi are devastated everyone's crying um 
you see the people at the base, uh, at the home base, the human base, and they're like a lot. Of, some of them are realizing, like, no, like maybe we're the bad guys. Like this is not not a good thing we're doing. Um, uh, the chief, Natiri's dad, uh, he's dying, um, and like at, uh, as he's dying, he gives Natiri his. Uh, uh, bow and arrow basically saying like hey this is this is yours now protect the people um and then he dies uh Neytiri tells jake to never come back like i don't want to see you again like it's over get out of here um grace and jake get the plug pulled and they get taken out of their avatars they're back at the thing and they're like yelling like no like you can't do this uh they, and then they just end up getting put in like jail, basically. So it's Grace, Jake, and Norm. He's he's another one of the scientist guys. Like I didn't really mention him before, but he's there, uh, just like tall, nerdy guy. Um, so they're in like a jail cell, and then Trudy comes in, like um, acting all cool with the guard, and then like pulls a gun on him and sets them free. So breaks them out um, along with another scientist guy. Uh, but he stays back because he's like their guy on the inside. So um, I think Max was his name, but he stays back. Uh, and then Trudy takes them in the helicopter, steals one of them, and gets them out of there. But as she, as she, so as she's getting them out of there, they're they're taken off, and the colonel sees this and he's like, "Nope, like I'm a total badass so i'm gonna like shoot him down with a regular gun i'm gonna shoot this helicopter down that doesn't work obviously he goes out there without a mask like also like the humans can't breathe the air there so they um they have to wear masks but he like leaves the like little containment area without a mask and tries to shoot him down it doesn't work uh they they get away um and then he like puts his mask on and goes back inside uh but Here's the problem. As he was shooting at them, he did get one into the into the helicopter, and Grace was hit. So she's bleeding out. Um, but it's like, okay, they gotta they gotta try to help her, and then Jake has a plan. And so, but he needs in order for this plan to work, he needs to get the their trust back, the Navis. So they put him back into a an avatar. And he wakes up, and it's all like he's in this like pile of ash because of the all the fire in the tree and everything like that um wakes up and he's going to uh try to tame the taruk so he gets on his uh ikran and he has an idea it's like well the taruk is always the like death from above basically and so it won't be expecting something to come from higher than that so he comes from above and jumps on top and then it cuts away so that's like all right like i mean we know like you can guess like they're not gonna end it with him like oh by the way he died you know off screen and you don't see it so um we see the navi gathered and here he comes and shows up as the writer you see his little silhouette on top and everyone's like okay like fine you can be one of us like we respect you now we have no choice but to <laughs> and he has the idea it's like okay like we gotta um try to put grace permanently into her uh, ab- uh into her navi body um so they do it and then there's the uh Neytiri's mom the shaman is saying like she's gotta pass through the eye of awa uh, so they do the ceremony and everything, but it doesn't work because she's already too, um, like her wounds were too much and she was already like too far gone. Like if they had done it sooner then it would have helped, but it was just too late. So everyone's sad about that, obviously. Uh, so then, uh, they do a little motivation speech jake's like all right like let's gather up the other tribes and we're gonna take the sky people down like let's do it like we've lost too much and we can't lose any more so 
see the montage he's talking to the other tribes and everything he shows up on the taruk and they're like oh shit like all right like we're with you um and then they have an idea like we're gonna bring the fight to the hallelujah mountains because the instruments on the helicopters and the planes get all wonky when they're in there because of like the weird gravity and everything so they have like an upper hand um because Trudy, she's the one that always goes in there, and she knows how to fly in it, but everyone else doesn't. So they're like, "All right, let's let's take it there. We'll have the upper hand." They do this big prayer to Ewa, like to give them strength and everything. Uh, then we see the humans are preparing. They got these big mech suits. They look like uh, I don't know. They look like transformers or whatever. What what was that like? movie with the or it was like boxing but it was with robots and like a mocap i don't know it was it was dumb it looked dumb i never saw it and maybe it's good uh but they, that's what they look like so they're walking around in those here they come uh battles starting it's going crazy you see like humans getting killed you see navi getting killed uh Nateria's flying around on her, her Ikran, but that gets shot, and it's like she goes down and then has to warn her Ikran, because they're, like, you know, bonded for life, so that's, like, a really, I mean, it'd be a big deal anyway, it's even if you have, like, four horses and one of them got killed, you'd be sad, obviously, uh, I'm not trying to downplay anything or anything like that, um, then you see Sute, he's the warrior guy that was supposed to be um, Neytiri's husband. He became the chief after her dad died. Um, then he's uh, he jumps off his Ikron into the plane and he's taken out a bunch of guys. And it's like super cool and everything, but then he gets killed. And that's that, you know, he gets a sad death. He falls out of the back all lifeless and everything. Um. Then Trudy gets taken down. She her plane gets shot. It's like disabled and like she won't. She knows she's not going to survive the crash. So she's uh, over the radio. It's like going down, Jake. I'm sorry. Like basically, like you know, I tried. And so she dies. Um. Then uh, Norm, the scientist guy, his avatar gets killed. So he like wakes up all like hyperventilating and like in shock out of his uh avatar thing uh and then like as it's like starting to get a little um it's starting to get to a point where it looks like they're gonna lose here come the uh the hammerhead rhino things and they come to save the day and Nateri's like Ewa has heard us. He's heard, he's heard our prayers, like or she's heard our prayers. So it's like working, like because now the the planet's fighting back. The creatures are fighting back as well, not just the Navi. And Jake, uh, he takes down uh, the big plane because he's he's flying around on Taruk with a machine gun, so he's got like quite an advantage. And he takes down. Uh, big plane uh but the colonel he bails out in his mech he basically like uses it as an escape pod mm -hmm. he like gets in his thing and jumps out and he's fine um mm -hmm. but then he's fighting then he's fighting jake like one-on-one -on -one. he gets and jake's like you know just in his navi body and uh colonel quartz is in the back and he's yelling at him he's like how does it feel to betray your own race and stuff like that so you know probably not a great guy like in on earth too he probably would be a racist guy anyway and uh so he uh, goes to like the little uh building that has jake's uh bo human body in there and in the avatar machine and he like breaks open the window so now the air's leaving and that's like that's gonna kill jake like just like that and but so jake's trying to like take him down but he's losing strength because his human body is dying like suffocating basically but 
as he's trying to do that, then here comes Neytiri with an arrow right to the colonel's chest. And then another one. So he gets taken down. But then it's like... Um, but then Jake wakes up out of his uh, little avatar coma. And he's like gasping for breath and he's trying to get to his gas mask but obviously his legs don't work so it's a little harder and he's like stumbling over the place that he ends up passing out and he thinks he's about to die but then um Neytiri figures out what's going on and like finds the human jake and saves him put gets the gas mask and puts it on his face and everything and he's and then he's alive like it worked and everything and then we get like a little short uh, montage of the humans. They're heading back to Earth, like after their failed attempt and everything. Some of them stay, like Norm stays, Max stays, like a few, a few of the good guy humans. They stay, and everything, and everyone else gets sent back to Earth. Um, and then uh, we see the ceremony, and they're doing the same thing that they try to do with Grace, and put Jake. Uh, in fully into the Navi body, like move his entire consciousness, soul, being, everything into the Navi body, and it ends with him with his eyes opening in his Navi body, and then that's the end. So it worked and everything. It's very happy ending. Um, it does feel a little rushed, like it's like oh, like we won, and then it just like oh, the bad guys went home, and I'm a i'm a navi now but overall it is a very good movie and the reason it ends like that is because james cameron knew like that down the line he wanted to make more movies and i i forget how many I, there's at least six i think like total uh, like for the whole plan but i could be wrong on that i feel like it's changing all the time um i did see uh the way of water the second one last night i made sure i could see it in uh imax 3d went to the grauman's chinese theater over on hollywood boulevard famous theater uh beautiful uh imax screen and everything beautiful interior just love love that theater i wish it had recliner seats but hey whatever and uh it, it was very good i feel like it um i'm not going to give anything away on it uh i hope everyone goes to see it if they haven't already uh i feel like it improved on the second one i mean it's hard not to like at least look better when it's 13 years later 12 years later no 13 and uh so obviously the special effects have improved. I think the story improved because it, you one could very easily argue that this is a like overdone plot in the first Avatar. It's a it's like a mix between Dances with Wolves and Pocahontas with a little bit of Fern Gully mixed in. Uh, but hey, I'm not gonna knock people for doing that because there's all like. One, there's only so many stories out there. And if you're putting a fresh new take on something, that's fine. Because I love A Bug's Life. But once you see Seven Samurai, you realize, oh, it's that plot. But they're putting a new take on it. So it is what it is. And Bug's Life isn't the only example. You got The Magnificent Seven. You got random episodes of TV shows that are just uh, Seven Samurai. So... It that is a over like overly done, but if you got something new with it, then do it. It doesn't matter, okay? Like they work because they work, and I'd rather see it. I mean, now it was at the time an original idea, like it's an original IP and everything. Now it has become a franchise, but you know, I'm it. I was skeptical, like, when he was like, oh, we're going to make sequels and everything. Uh, but after seeing the second one, I'm like, okay, yeah. Like, uh, I'm now I'm excited for the third one, you know, in two years, I think, is when it's going to come out. Um, and it seems to be doing really well, so we probably will get all of the iterations. And he did film them all together, so that's good, too. So we won't have to, like, wait another 12 years for the next one. Um but yeah, really good movie. Uh, I enjoy it. Um, I, 
was also probably the only time that I've been glad I spent the extra money on 3D IMAX because I've never been a big 3D guy. I was like I had hope for it after the first Avatar. And I'm like, oh, like this, like. 3D is like really nice and then like you see the next few 3D releases because it was like just a big gimmick for a while and I'm like oh okay no you know it was just Avatar was good and so I I forked over the extra money for it on the way of water and I was glad I did it looked great it felt felt three-dimensional it didn't hurt my eyes at all or anything like that it wasn't like straining and it didn't like rely on like cheap 3d tricks or anything like that so i was happy with it but yeah i hope everyone enjoyed this episode i hope everyone uh comes back came back after the short uh hi- hiatus for the holidays and um hope everyone sticks around uh with the new schedule change on the releases and i hope everyone is having a great new year uh, remember to follow on social media at movies they're pretty good um, except for on Twitter it's at movies good pod because movies they're pretty good was too long um, got Facebook Instagram uh, YouTube if uh, if you're listening there thank you and I hope everyone sticks around for the next episode uh, Stay tuned on the social media where I announce those, and I hope everyone has a good week. Thanks. Bye.